when and how should I rebalance my portfolio? Once a year or once a quarter? Depends. Do you like that answer? Depends. Uh, no, I know how much people hate that answer. It depends, but it really does depend. And I'm not trying to be uh, Richard and uh, answer that question, you know, uh, with an attitude or anything, but it really does depend. I'm going to use 2024 as, as an example. I do look at my portfolio pretty much every day because I, I do like to pay attention to it. But when it comes to retirement savings, and um, that's what you're asking for, for the retirement savings, I look at it every quarter and the 401k plan, the brokers, they are required to send you a end of the quarter statement to show you how your uh, fund is performing. So that's where you have to start, right? So if it review your quarterly statement, okay? That would be the first thing you need to do. Here's the second thing you should do. What is your allocation target? Okay. And that, oh, that depends on your age and that depends on your risk and how much you want to just kind of like, what is my target? Do I want to, you know, be more aggressive? Am I super aggressive with my 401k? Am I 20 right now, I'm 20 years old and I have my time horizon is a lot longer. So if my allocation target, just an example, okay, is 100% stocks, or I'm, I'm just going to say 100, let's do 80% S&P 500, and I'm going to put, I don't know, 20% Russell 2000. Okay, just an example, not financial advice, and just an example, and you're going to do small cap 2000, Russell 2000 is small cap index fund. So 20% like that. So the next question would be at the end of the quarter, let's say March 31st, 2024, your S and P 500 did a 10% return. Okay. I think that's what happened too. And you look at Russell 2000 and it had a 2% return. Now you can do a quarterly reallocation and just say, you know what, my S and P is, you know, doing a, a lot more than what I want. And I'm going to reallocate some of that into the Russell 2000 to maintain the target rate of 80% to 20%. Okay. I mean, that, I've seen that a lot. I know with the TSP, people are popular with the C and S fund. I get it, but it's really up to your target, right? Some people just want to do hundred percent uh, S and P 500. That's fine. That makes it easier. Now, another example is let's say you always want to have bonds. Okay. So you want your target is going to be 90% stocks and 10% bonds. Okay. So you can look at how your S and P 500, let's just say S and P 500 does 20% return so far. And that's how it's been, right? 20% your bonds right now, um, short-term bonds, I believe it's about 3%. Okay. So this, depending on the balance, it might've increased by it's increased by 20% and this increased by 3%. So if you're the type of person who wants to maintain that target, uh, then you can do like end of the year reallocation and say, Hey, S and P 500 has done really well for me. I'm going to sell some of this to maintain my 90% and maintain 10%. So you can just say, all right, I'm going to make it 9,000 and that's always going to be a thousand dollars and it just grows every year and you can just manually calculate it. Now, here's another example. But what if you have uh, individual stocks and I love individual stocks. I do, but I have to be very, very careful with individual stocks. My, this is my, uh, my wife and I, we always follow this. So we have index funds. The majority of our assets are in index funds. And then we have about between 10 to 15% in individual stocks. Okay. So I'll, I'll just say 85% index funds and then 15% individual stocks. You know, when I invest in individual stocks, we do the research. Like we don't just blindly invest in any individual stocks and then hopefully make that return. I think that's a mistake for especially people who are just starting out with their investing journey. Index funds have been really easy to do and they have gained really well. Okay. Now I'm a nerd. And I love individual stocks, but only certain stocks. And one, one of the stocks I had, I'm really debating if I should even share this uh, because that's not my intent to tell you, oh, I, I invest in this stock and this is how much I gain. Okay, I'll, I'll share it. Meta. I invested in Meta in a lot in October 
November 2022. And you remember 2022, believe it or not, uh, the cost basis was around $90, $90 a share. If you look at the uh, the meta stock right now, it's about 500 bucks a share. Okay, so it's 5x since then. Now, I'm not bragging here, but when we reviewed at the end of 2023, meta stock was around 400 bucks a share. So this individual stock, individual stock portfolio went from 15% to about 35%, okay? So 35% of my portfolio became all individual stocks and the rest of my index funds. I mean, that's cool, right? I was like, oh yeah, not, I mean, look at this, you know, this is a lot of money, but this is where we kind of mess with the risk, the risk scale, right? We had a discussion, do we want to maintain that 15% or do we want to bring it down from 35% to 15%? So what we did, and I did shave some of the individual stocks, sold some meta stock uh, and invested that into the index funds. So that would be the allocation, right? I went from 35%, not down to 15% right away. We went to 25%. So um, I sold probably about 10% of that stock and then invested that into the index fund gradually. And then when Meta hit about 500 bucks a share, I sold a little bit more uh, to make that profit and put that right back into the index funds, okay? So now I am uh, probably around 20% individual stocks and 80% index funds, okay? I never talk about individual stocks on this channel because that's not my intent. Because I don't ever tell people like, yeah, do these individual stocks and you can make this much money. And you know, you can watch other YouTubers for doing that, but uh, that's not me at all. It's just one of those things that I love to do research on and I love the company. I do. There are other individual stocks that I invest in, um, but I only share with my private clients and uh, you know, they don't necessarily follow that trend too. So what do you think is better? Investing 500 bucks a month, making 10% return or investing a thousand dollars a month, making a 7% return on investment. You can't figure out how much you can invest without a budget. There's no way around it. I personally tested out the budgeting app called YNAB and it's not just an app that can track your income and expenses, but it can even help you create a plan to pay down your student loans, car loans, personal loans, or credit cards a lot faster. So if you're ready to change your life by getting out of the paycheck to paycheck cycle, you can get a free trial without any credit card information by using the link in the description below. So those are the things that, that uh, one of the reallocation strategies that I do to make sure that I do not exceed between 15 and 20% of individual stocks while the rest of them are in index funds. So um, when it comes to index funds, I'm always gonna have my S&P 500 index fund. Um, I do have some of the small cap index fund. I have my, uh, I don't have any exposure to an international fund because I believe that S&P 500 has enough international exposure. Uh, you know, when you look at Apple, look at Apple already doing businesses in Vietnam and Vietnam, China and India, uh, you see the meta exposure in Europe uh, Microsoft is pretty much worldwide, right? So I feel like, eh, I don't need to do uh, the international funds because the S&P 500 itself has enough exposure for that. And there are some sector ETFs that I do. Those are really, really, really uh, more risky uh, because they only focus on specific sectors. Like you can look at energy. Uh, I don't invest in those. I'm just kind of letting you know, you can look at those energy sector, uh, tech sector, you can look at healthcare sector and all that stuff too. But yeah, take a look at those. Um, I would say that's kind of how I reallocate my investments. Uh, on the side note about the bonds, and I know people were talking about uh, CNS funds a lot, but you know some people do CNG funds. I mean, that would be the government bonds. I'm talking about TSP right now, but you know I heard a pretty good argument uh, the other day that if you receive a pension, treat that more like bonds and treat your 401k contribution or TSP contribution more of a uh, stock portfolio. Let me know what your thoughts are. I don't know if I agree with that yet. I think there should still be some risk management to every portfolio, especially if you're close to your retirement. So anyway, that was a really good question. Um, I really appreciate it.